power hungry mother pays for our wedding photos as a gift, but then thinks she owns them just because she paid for them. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. So my wife and I are young and didn't have much money, so we asked our respective parents to help out as much as they could. Her parents, who are amazing people, help way more than we could have ever asked and never asked for anything in return. They actually were surprised that my wife was able to pull off as much as she did with the small amount we had. My dad had recently been through a terrible divorce and had moved to a new place. I didn't feel comfortable asking him for money, so the majority of the load was left to my mother and stepfather. One thing about my mother is nothing is ever simply a gift with her. Everything comes with a twist. You just never know when she'll use it against you. When we mentioned that we needed help, of course she was more than happy to help. Her gift to us was to pick whatever photographer we wanted, no matter the price. We happily accepted and thanked them both. Fast forward several months later, the wedding is finished and we are barely a month into our marriage. A little more background about the story. My grandfather, my mom's dad, was in the late stages of dementia. He no longer recognized anyone, believed his dreams were real, and never really answered with anything much more than the occasional yeah to anything he was asked. It was a rough time watching him turn into this. Of course, my mother refused to believe he didn't know who she was or who I was, and regularly told us that we were wrong when we would try to convince her he was absent mentally. So the wedding is done and we're waiting for the pictures all 699 of them, occasionally in contact with the photographer to check in and see how things are progressing. It was always a friendly conversation. One day, my wife receives a concerning email from the photographer, asking her to please have my mom stop harassing her for pictures. Confused by this new information, we ask her what she's talking about. According to the photographer, my mother had been emailing and texting her multiple times throughout the week, asking for any pictures she had finished without telling me or my wife. She was trying to see pictures from our wedding before us. Of course, I immediately call her. I will admit I was angry and I went about it in a way I should not have, but I also feel justified. So I call her and confront her about not only how she was treating the photographer, but also about sneaking behind our back to get pictures before we do. Instead of owning up to her mistakes, she tried the power move thinking I would back down because she is my mother after all. She stated to me with complete sincerity in her voice that since she paid for the pictures, she should be able to see them when she wanted. Of course I lost it, not so politely reminding her that it was a gift to us from her and my stepdad, and that if she was intending to act this way, she should have just found her own photographer. When she realized the power move wasn't going to work, she turned to guilt bringing in my grandfather. This of course angered me even more. She said that she wanted the photo so she could take them to show my grandfather and that it was wrong of me to deny him seeing these pictures before he passed. At this point, I had made up my mind, and out of pure disbelief, I had nothing to say. So I quietly informed her that she would receive the pictures when me and my wife felt comfortable showing her, and that she needed to stop harassing the photographer, or none of us will get pictures. To this day, she has not received the pictures. The most surprising part is that she hasn't even asked for them. Not too long ago, I asked my stepdad why. He was clueless that all of this was happening, and he said she was still trying to make me feel guilty about how I talked to her. That's my mother, ladies and gentlemen. Always the master manipulator. That really comes with a sense of entitlement. Thinking that you can see the wedding photos before the actual wedding couple? Why don't some people just have patience? You will get to see the photos. Trust me, the couple wants them as quickly as possible, and I'm sure they'll show them to you too. Harassing the photographer, though, is not doing anyone any favors. But it sounds like this woman has been doing this throughout our poster's entire life. I'm sure she was very difficult to grow up with. They wanted a $300 deposit for me to rent a van, but luckily, there was a workaround. Just happened today, but very satisfying for me. I bid on some furniture at an online auction. I was surprised I actually won it, but very happy too. It was mostly small pieces, but big enough that it wouldn't fit in my car. So I decided to rent a van. The major Midwest hardware store in my city has a special where you can get the van for $18.95. 
Their website said weekend rates were higher and I'd have to pay a deposit, but that was all. I figured it was still cheaper than a rental place, so I went bright and early this morning and went to customer service. I asked the customer service lady about the process. She took copies of my license and my insurance and plopped the rental agreement on the counter. Are you transporting things purchased here? No, just some furniture. Okay, without the purchase, it's a $300 deposit on a credit card. Okay. I know it's a vehicle and it's worth more than $300, but that's a big deposit for bringing it back in an hour. So I looked around and saw the snack cakes display. Actually, I'll be transporting things I bought here too. Since you said you weren't, I have to have it on the same transaction. Not a problem. I grabbed a sleeve of little donuts and laughed as my total dropped from $330 to just over $100. I ran my card and finished the transaction in silence. When I returned the van, it got a very thorough walk around by the manager. I got my deposit back on my card from him and saw my cashier still staring daggers at me from the back. I was very glad I saved big money with their van today. Honestly, that feels more like an oversight of the company. If it can literally be any purchase, then yeah, of course people are going to abuse it. It's not like you can blame the guy for wanting to save a couple hundred bucks on the deposit. Besides, he brought it back without any issues. Why shoot him dirty looks? My brother didn't like the way I was doing his laundry, so I tried something different. My brother and I have never really gotten along. He's very OCD and controlling. I don't respond well to him. As kids, we had chores. More than our friends, but nothing abusive. For several years, I did all the dishes and he did all the laundry. Then, when I was 12, he wanted to switch. I got pushed into it. He decided to nitpick every little thing I did with the laundry. After screaming at me for close to an hour for not ironing all of his clothing, I decided to do what he wanted. I figured out how to use the old-fashioned starch and I used heavy starch on all of his clothing. I went into his room and took out every single item out of his closet and drawers and starched and ironed it all. He thought he had a package of underwear that was new. I found it and starched them and ironed them. Of course he blew a gasket, started screaming and throwing things. My parents were very tired of his rages. My father helped me make it so he couldn't use the washer to wash out his clothing. My parents refused to take him to a laundromat to wash his clothes, telling him he needed to make it up to me and stop being a jerk. Apparently, he ended up with a rash on his private areas from the scratchy starch. He never again fussed at me to iron anything. I still don't iron. I haven't owned one in almost 20 years. I don't ever intend to own one. I definitely feel like your brother went a little overboard with this one. Sure, it's your job to do the laundry, but ironing everything out feels like a step too far. If that's the level of detail that you're looking for, then maybe you do that last step yourself. That's not a small task you're asking for. It can take a while, and his behavior on top of that is just unacceptable. I'm glad the parents backed our original poster on this one. Don't tell your underpaid employees to go find another job. They will. I was working for a small local store chain. 17 stores across the state, paid $1 over minimum wage, apparently had decent benefits if you were full time, they made sure no one was, and wasn't too terrible. Then last week, the entire staff at a different store quit at once. Didn't think much of it, until our boss's boss came in and said he needed people to go cover that store. It was 42 miles away. Do we get any sort of raise or gas money? No, we don't pay you to drive to work. Will we work eight hour shifts? No, you're all part time employees. Of course, everyone started voicing their disapproval. Half of us don't drive at all, and most share a car with a family member. We're making maybe 20k a year, and now they want us to drive over an hour each way in traffic to work a three to five hour shift? The director got upset and said, I'll be back tomorrow and expect four volunteers. If you don't want to be a team player, I suggest you find another job. So I did just what he suggested, went online and found companies offering entry level positions for several dollars an hour more, and some even had a signing bonus. I had two interviews set up the same day and ended up taking a warehouse job that paid $3 more and had a $1,000 bonus after 120 days. Two other coworkers got a job there as well, and we're encouraging everyone at our store to apply. Apparently, the job market has gone crazy lately, but none of us were really looking. We didn't realize we were underpaid. Those jerks were just taking advantage. 
Another classic case of a company taking advantage of its bottom line workers. You can't just expect people to drive that kind of distance without some kind of compensation. You have to make it worth their time. They're doing you a favor. And threatening their jobs is not okay. I hope there was a lesson learned here to have a little bit of consideration for your employees. I feel like in recent years, things are starting to get better, but there's still a long way to go. I bought my niece a fake version of the expensive bag she wanted just to humble her for once. I'm a 38 year old female. My niece, 15, is very spoiled by my brother and sister-in-law. She's an only child and also the first and only grandchild to my parents. Ever since she was younger, my brother, sister-in-law, and parents gave her everything and anything she wanted. Never said no to her. You get the gist. Due to this, now at 15, she is a nightmare to deal with. Everyone just basically gives her whatever she wants because, you know, she's the baby. My husband, 42, and I are child-free by choice. We both have good careers and do very well for ourselves. I've always had an expensive taste when it came to clothing, jewelry, bags, etc. A few weeks ago, my husband and I went over to my parents' house for a family lunch. My brother, sister-in-law, and niece were there too. The conversations were mainly catered around my niece because her birthday was approaching. My parents asked what she wanted for her birthday this year. She told them that she wanted a specific designer bag worth around $2,200 US dollars. My parents were completely taken aback and kind of started laughing, telling my niece that's a bit excessive and there's no way they're spending that kind of money on a bag. My niece then turned to my husband and I and said, well, you guys can get it for me then. You're rich, but you always get me cheap gifts. My husband and I were both taken aback at how ungrateful and rude she was acting. The gifts we get her aren't cheap at all. And also, the sheer audacity of a 15-year-old demanding I get her a $2,000 bag. My sister-in-law jumped into the conversation saying how I have all these bags and flaunting them around my niece is only going to make her want them. So, pretty much saying, I made my bed, lie in it, and get her the bag. I think they left the conversation thinking they guilt tripped me into getting her the bag. Well, they were wrong. I hopped onto one of those designer dupe wholesale websites and ordered a bag for like $60. The bag came in around two weeks later. I wrapped the gift and brought it to my niece's birthday party. Fast forward. She saw mine and my husband's gift and got super excited. She opened her gift and immediately her face dropped. She turned red in the face. You could tell the bag was fake. She asked us, what is this? Is this a joke? I said, no, this is your gift. Maybe in the future you should be grateful for the gifts we get you. It's not the price that matters, it's the thought. My niece started crying, calling us cheap and embarrassing. My sister-in-law had some not so nice words either. My brother, sister-in-law, and parents are upset because I let down my niece and think I should apologize. I think she needed to be humbled and that her parents should encourage her to apologize to me and my husband for demanding us to buy her the bag in the first place. Am I the jerk? No, absolutely not. I'm completely behind our original poster on this one. Your niece sounds like she needed to be humbled, and it sounds like you've done the world a service. It takes a lot of entitlement to expect your aunt and uncle to buy you a $2,200 bag. That's insane. You're 15 years old. You don't even know the value of a dollar yet. You want that $2,200 bag? Get out there and get a job and work for it, and then you'll understand exactly how much $2,200 is. I blew up at my husband for sharing pictures of our daughter's birthday celebration when he knows how my family feels about it. Ever since my brother passed away at the age of 17 on his birthday, my family decided to never celebrate birthdays ever again. It was my mom and dad's decision, but because of how much the family loved my brother, extended family decided to do the same and stand in agreement with this decision. My husband would refuse to follow this and kept celebrating his birthday. Me and the family didn't say a thing about it since he's not blood family. But when I first got pregnant, the argument about celebrating our daughter's birthdays occurred. My family advised me to just not celebrate her birthday, since she's a baby and won't even remember anyway. I agreed, but my husband threw a fit and insisted that we celebrate our daughter's first birthday. I caved in eventually, but told him we'd have a small secret celebration so that my family wouldn't find out. He agreed. The next day, I got a call from my mom and she was so upset, saying that my word meant nothing and that I have no respect for my brother's memory nor the family. 
I asked what she meant and she told me she saw the birthday party pictures my husband posted on social media. I was too shocked to even argue. I hung up and went straight to my husband to confront him about it. He got defensive and said that he didn't need my permission to post pictures and that he wanted to show his family the birthday celebration pics since I had insisted we have a small secret party and exclude them. I explained to him how this made me look bad and a liar to my family. But he said they can get over it and called my mom snobby. I blew up at him and we had a huge fight about it. He started sulking later and said I ruined the memory of our daughter's first birthday for him and verbally abused him with how I lashed out. But I solely did it out of frustration knowing that what happened caused a massive problem between me and my family. Now he's expecting an apology from me. Am I the jerk? Honestly, this is a really strange tradition to keep. I get it's about honoring your brother's memory, but I don't think this is something that your brother would have wanted. I'm sure he would want everyone to go on and enjoy their lives and enjoy their birthdays. Not to have the world of birthdays come to an end just because he's gone. I'm sure if your brother was still around, he would have loved to have been there for your daughter's birthday and to have seen all the pictures. This seems like a very selfish thing to do, honestly. I get that maybe it was hard for the first little bit, but time goes on, and wounds do heal, but you have to let them. Clearly, this being such a big point of contention with your family means that they're still holding on to this and have just attached it to birthdays in general. They need to have some disassociation and move on. I'm sorry for your loss, but don't let it continue to cause loss in the rest of your life. I called my stepfather a controlling jerk when he said I can't take my sister out for fast food anymore. I, 27-year-old female, have a half-sister who's 13. I moved out about four years ago, and ever since then, I've been taking her out about once a week to hang out and get food. Usually sushi, Chinese food, or Subway, my sister's favorite. This is our bonding time. We both love food and getting out of my parents' house gives her the opportunity to vent about what's going on at home, or just relax and watch YouTube videos and browse memes on Reddit. She's told me how much she appreciates it and I often get text messages from her asking to go out when I've missed several weeks in a row. My stepfather, 53, hates when I take my sister out. He's been in my life since I was two, and he started making my life hell when my half-brother, who's now 18, was born. I could write a whole novel about the things he did, but the relevant issue here is that he caused me to have an incredibly unhealthy relationship with food. When I moved out at 22, I was just shy of 300 pounds and had absolutely no skills when it came to regulating my eating habits. In the past few years, I've done a lot of work. I've been seeing a professional and I've managed to get my weight down to 230, which I consider a huge step in the right direction. My sister is an athlete, and I don't say that lightly. She's in the highest level league for her sport of choice, and if everything goes well, she'll probably have a full ride scholarship when she eventually does go off to university. As a result, my stepfather has gotten obsessive about what kind of food they keep at home. My sister often complains to me about how stifling it is, and she's even expressed to me things that make me worry she might start developing an eating disorder. I've told all of this to my mother, but she's a bit of a wet blanket when it comes to my stepfather. Well, I brought her home the other day from one of our outings, and I get a text from my stepfather. He basically said, I'm not allowed to take my sister out for fast food anymore, as I'm messing up her sports and he doesn't want her to get fat like me. I blew up at him, told him he was a piece of crap and a complete jerk. I laid out all the things he did in my childhood that caused me to be overweight and have an unhealthy relationship with food, and said if it wasn't for me, my sister would probably already have an eating disorder with how controlling and obsessive he is about food. He told the whole family that I was being disrespectful to him, and now everyone is divided. Part of my mom's side of the family, who knows how my stepdad can be, is proud of me for standing up for myself and telling him the truth. The rest of my family is on my stepdad's side, saying I'm disrespectful and that he's just doing what's best for my sister. He's demanding an apology, and while there's no way that's going to happen, I'm wondering if I went too far in telling him what I thought. So, am I the jerk? I don't think you went too far in telling him what you thought because he didn't hold back on you. Newsflash, he's not a perfect person either, and if he's going to be dishing it out, then he better be ready to take it too. You're allowed to have a relationship with your sister, and she's allowed to go out for food. I get that being an athlete, you need to watch certain things, but I'm sure she's doing that, and it hasn't been a hindrance up till now anyway. 
This really just feels like a control move on your stepdad's part. From what it sounds like, it seems that you're the only one that isn't his kid. And just from this little bit of interaction, I can kind of tell that he doesn't treat you the same. He seems to look down on you, and feels that that's going to influence his daughter as well. What he doesn't seem to realize is that you're actually the positive influence that she needs, when all he's bringing to the table is negativity. It's one thing to be supportive. It's entirely different to be the level of controlling that he currently is. I hope you guys figure it out so you can still find a way to spend time with your sister. Maybe she needs to be the one to stand up to him. Or, God forbid, your mother. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.